Oh, that's today. <laughs> I've got pizza in one minute. Oh, that was so good. What's up, guys? My name's Lewis. Oh, I need to sort my hair out. One second. Okay, so today I'm bringing you five car photography tips I use to improve my pictures. So if you don't follow me already on Instagram, I do a lot of automotive photography. I do a bit of creative bits as well and some models. But my main source is cars, as you can see. So tip number one is high shutter speed on your camera. So typically if I'm shooting a car in the daytime, I'm going to range between 1 over 320 and 1 over 500 for the second on the shutter speed. It just takes that little bit of micro jitters out of the picture. I'm quite a run and gun sort of photographer so I don't like to mess about with equipment too much so I'll basically be all over the place I'll be getting different spots and I'll be in the bushes and in the tree up a wall <laughs> like I hate tripods but for the most part I do shoot a lot of handheld stuff it's just it's just my sort of style I tend to work better that way so I use a Sony a7 III recently got it I've only been using it a couple of months now I've moved from a Canon 80D which was an absolutely amazing camera do recommend that camera for the price range if you are starting out photography or you're looking to upgrade. The camera before that was a Canon 550D. Looking back at it now, like not the best camera in the world, but it did the job. I did a lot, did a lot of paid shoots for that. So if you're looking for those crispy shots with no shake or blur in the camera, I highly recommend upping your shutter speed. That's rule number one. I did add pizza left. <laughs> Tip number two, try and shoot at a low ISO. So with my Sony a7 III, I can go as low as 50 ISO. That is super low. A lot of the time I'm shooting outside, it will be on between 50 and 100. I use as low ISO as possible. I highly recommend it. In the daytime, you don't need to go above 100, depending on where the sun is. So if you're in shade, say behind a building and there's no sun, maybe bump it up a little bit. A lot of cameras nowadays do deal with um, high ISO really good. So the higher the ISO on the camera, the more noise that gets introduced into that shot. So if you book your ISO up to 10,000 or 6,400 or whatever, and just do some test shots, when you go to edit it or open it on, on a laptop or computer, you'll see noise and no one likes noise. At night time, that's a completely different story. I'm gonna do another video on nighttime shooting as well. Oh, I'm still sore from the gym. <sighs> Tip number three, open aperture for bokeh. Basically, if you've got a camera that goes as low as say 1.8, so f-stop 1.8 or f-stop 2.8 is normally a typical camera nowadays, a camera lens nowadays, it will give you that depth of field. So for example, if you look at this picture here, this picture has a nice depth of field. You can see the background's blurry and the subject is in focus. If you look at this picture, you'll see that it's a shot at a high f-stop which basically means a lot of the image is going to be in focus so if you're looking for those close-up detail shots shooting as low as 1.8 is basically going to give you that depth of feel it's going to give you a nice crispy bokeh and at night time if you've got lights in the background you're literally bokeh heaven you're absolutely winning so the lens i use is actually a zoom lens it's an 18 to 35 sigma art lens so with this camera it does get depth of field but i have an 85 millimeter canon with a Sigma converter onto my Sony. That gets some absolute depth of field. It's 85 mil, so it's a nice focal length. Prime lenses are gonna be the best lenses you can get to get a nice depth of field. A zoom lens is not as focused as kind of a prime lens. You won't get enough bokeh. You'll get a much better depth of field with a prime lens. A prime lens is basically, you can't zoom in or out, it's just fixed. Then my next lens is gonna be a 35 mil Sigma, so that's gonna be perfect. Tip number four, use your surroundings. So a lot of shoots I've been on, uh, people are watching this that I've done shoots on your cars, you'll know what I'm all about. I'll climb up the tree, I'll get in the bush, I'll get in the most random locations just to get the shot. I love to look around my area, get a bit more creative. I do think outside the box a lot of the time. A lot of my shots, I uh, think I've been known now to get quite low. Like I love getting like really low down shots. So those shots where the foreground's out of focus, but the car is like crispy and shot. They're the kind of pictures I really enjoy. And I love to kind of mess around with different angles and see what I can do. A few examples I do this, but in terms of getting creative and getting in different angles. This one, I'm in the bush got this one this is a shot I got literally was I pulled the branch down just to get my camera into the tree and then shot through it so as you can see getting a little bit creative you take your photography a little bit more and people start to recognize your style I think I've got to the point where I kind of know what my style is and other people are starting to know as well which is really nice um, yeah fifth and final tip is scout for locations in your area I love I drive a car I love to drive around and I've got a massive list 
of locations for as well as cars, models, where I can shoot. So I'll take my time out of my day to drive around, look at different locations, be like, yeah, that spot's sick, I can't wait to shoot there. I'll jot down the idea or just put it in my um, iPad notes. iPad, don't have an iPad. I'll put it in my iPhone notes and I'll make sure that if I go for another shoot, I can take a car to that location. I've definitely shot in a couple of locations in Leicester where I know no car photographer has taken cars there before. The shoot I did here with the S2000, I shot an Audi A3 there as well, which is here. We had to get up on like a drop curb just to get to that spot and I have not seen any pictures apart from mine at that location which is really nice as well. I've got other places coming in Leicester that I've not shot before so stay tuned for that. If you're a car photographer and you have no idea where you're going to take a car to do a shoot then you've not prepared yourself. I've got maybe 50 to 60 locations in Leicester alone. In the daytime, in the nighttime, I'll jot next to it whether to shoot this in the day or night, whether it's got lights. Bonus tip as well, get yourself a circular polarizer filter. So basically it's one of these, it goes on your lens. Once it's twisted on properly, there's a second ring that you twist. So basically with this, a CPL, all it's gonna do is take out reflections from the car. I've just got a cheap one at the minute, um, just to kind of get shots done. I am gonna upgrade to a better CPL. I've seen one ones out there for between 50 and 100 pound. So that's my Sigma lens. This is the most common one that I use. It's an 18 to 35 art lens with a converter on. I absolutely love this lens. This is, I think when I bought it, they'll probably go between 500 and maybe 600 quid you can get one for. Bit of a zoom lens, but it's a short zoom. It's only 18 to 35, and I shoot a lot of the time at 35 mil, 1.8 get a bit of depth of field again. Um, so invest in a good lens, this I'm probably not gonna get rid of for a long time. Pretty much 95% of the photos and videos you do see on my Instagram and YouTube are on this lens. Absolute killer. So yeah, hopefully that gave you a bit of insight into just a couple of tips that you can use in your car photography. Hope you enjoyed the video guys. Like and subscribe for more. My next video is gonna be for nighttime shoots. Again, it'll just be about five or six tips. If you've got any questions or ideas for the next videos you want me to do, just comment down below. I'm gonna be making loads of videos like this. Hopefully you enjoyed it. It's not the best video in the world, but it's my first media sort of um, tutorial. Be having ones coming out for videos as well. I'll be having other videos coming out. Um, going over even video settings and what I use and what's a picture profile, what's S-Log, how, how I colour grade, or everything you can think of. I'm going to be coming out with them um, every week or so, so I'm going to try and keep up to date. Like and subscribe if you enjoyed. Again, comment down below if you want to see some more bits and I'll see you in the next video.